A big thank you goes out to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing great. What can I say? <laughs> this is just absolutely spectacular. It's funny, the last few days, Jeremy and I have been spending pretty much all of our time in an area that can't be more than one square kilometer. And out of, I don't know, 20 odd years of photography, this trip has probably been one of my most productive in the smallest area possible. I think one of the reasons why it's been a success is not only the conditions that we have right now, everything seems to be perfect except for the wind, uh, but we've tried to keep our options open. You know, originally when we came out on this trip uh, to the Rockies, we had really planned to go to Malign Lake. We brought a canoe with us and we were going to canoe down the lake, camp and uh, take some shots around the lake in the hopes that we'd get some fog. The conditions uh, the last week have been extremely warm for this time of year. So the chances of getting fog pretty slim. So we just decided to come here on a whim and uh, that whim has worked out really really well. Now al although the wind has been quite strong it has been coming from uh, I think it's been coming from the southwest so on this side of the shore it's been quite calm in comparison to the rest of the lake like if you go up uh, towards uh, I don't know Rocky Mountain House it, was, it would be much windier than, than here but the wind has died down now, but it's also changed direction and it's coming from uh, the northwest. And even though the wind in the trees is better for photography, the shoreline isn't because now we're getting all these waves coming right into the shoreline. So we're not getting any of those nice reflections that we were getting earlier. So today what we've decided to do is walk inland just a little bit and this is another part of the forest where these are mostly uh, poplars and uh, as you can see the fall color is is spectacular at this end of the lake as well uh, you can see that uh, this is still part of the lake and it's it's flooded inland here so a lot of the trees further back are, are actually in you know a couple of feet of water which has just been amazing for photography so this scene here is a, is a given. I mean, it's such a beautiful scene. And what I really love about it is the opening towards those three trees in the background that are reflecting in the water and then surrounded by this wash of, of yellows. And I think uh, this is, um, I'm not sure, but I think this might be some kind of willow. I could be wrong, but it has a kind of a silvery blue color to it, which I really like. Um, so with this scene here, I'm taking a bunch of images uh, without a polarizer because I kind of like that sheen, but I'll also take some with a polarizer just in case to get rid of some of that sheen.
One of the features that I really took uh, advantage of on this trip with the GFX 100 was the cropping feature. Now, both the Nikon D850 and the GFX 50 have the same feature, but I've never really taken advantage of it. But with the GFX 100, you have so many megapixels to work with that as soon as you crop an image, you're not really losing that much. So in this case, I really took advantage of it by cropping this scene in all different uh, formats. The first uh, image here is four by five, and then the second image here is 16 by nine, and then lastly, uh, 65 by 24. And I did crop a little bit off the edge. I like all of the formats. They all turned out really great and they have a different feel to them. But it'd be great to know which formats you prefer, if any. So be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to once again thank Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. You know that it's not uncommon for me to lose my mojo or inspiration for landscape photography, especially after a successful trip like this one to the Canadian Rockies. Uh, the same thing also happened to me after my trip to Iceland with Thor, Thomas and Alistair this past July. One of the things that I like to do if I do lose inspiration is to take up an activity that is perhaps a departure from photography. That activity could be simply going for a run or a hike into the mountains or something perhaps a little more artistic like drawing. Now, I'm not great at drawing, but a great place to start learning a new art form is Skillshare. As an example, Skillshare offers a plethora of online courses in the arts that might be just the thing you're looking for to get those creative juices flowing again. As an example, I found a wonderful looking course by Brent Everston, where Brent covers the art and science of drawing. So if you're in a creative rut or just want to learn a new skill, why not head on over to Skillshare.com. I put a link down below for the first 1000 click throughs for a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership, which by the way, gives you access to thousands of online courses for just under $10 a month. Go check it out. Now, something worth keeping in mind when you're photographing scenes like this is the angle of view or your lens choice. You'll notice that with this wide angle lens, obviously I have to get quite a bit closer to, to get these trees as large as I want in the scene. But you'll also notice that the trees in the background look quite a bit more uh, insignificant. I'll often use longer focal lengths to get rid of things in the frame and kind of flatten out that scene and what i mean by flatten out is is give the illusion that the foreground is much closer to the background so it flattens the scene out it also eliminates a lot of the distractions so as you can see with this wide angle lens i'm including a lot of the sky and for me that's a huge uh, distraction so this is a wide angle lens. I'll put on a, a long telephoto lens and back away from the scene and you'll be able to see the difference and what I'm talking about. So as you can see now, I've backed that camera quite a, a way back and I put on a longer lens and you'll see now that we've eliminated that sky and brought those background trees forward so it's kind of flattened out the scene and I think that most of you will agree that this is a much nicer scene we've just filled in the whole frame with color and these trees and the reflections and we've gotten rid of most of the distractions 
that'll take your eye away from those things that we want to draw the viewer's attention to. Also, when you're photographing the grand landscape, try not to forget those really intimate scenes, especially in the fall when you get all these great fall colors on the ground. And especially with this camera, because it has such a, an amazing amount of detail in there, uh, these shots should look just awesome. So what I'm concentrating on here is just a random pattern again of leaves floating in the water. And I'm, I'm also getting uh, the reflections of the branches and the sky above. The only thing you have to be careful of is that uh, you're not getting your own reflection in there. And that's kind of why I'm at a little bit of an angle here. Ideally, I would have rather have shot looking straight down but of course, if I do that, then you'll, uh, you'll get your own reflection in the scene as well. Now I have put a polarizer on to try and get rid of some of those reflections, but because of the angle that I am, uh, it doesn't really do an awful lot. It just saturates the colors just a little bit more. But it's a beautiful little scene. Just fill the frame with, uh, with leaves, and then there's one or two red ones in there to kind of break it up a little bit. Now I'm running out of uh, superlatives to ex <laughs> explain these places. Uh, all I can say is it's just stunning scenery, one scene after another. And uh, luck has come our way. Finally, the wind has just calmed down to almost nothing, which is just unheard of <laughs> in this area. As you can see behind me, you can now see the turquoise color of this lake and it really contrasts beautifully with these yellow kind of yellowy reddish leaves. So what I'm doing here again, I'm, I'm, I've cropped it to a pano, a 16 by nine, because all I, I want to simplify this as much as possible. I don't really want any of the background in other than the lake itself. So I have the lake and then the leaves with the trunks of the trees and then of course a little bit of uh, this I guess willow in, in the foreground and that's it nothing else as soon as you have the background in there it just starts to get too busy Jeremy uh, <laughs> he <laughs> took a bit of a fall and I've never seen it was spectacular he fell two or three times backwards filled his uh, hip waders with water but he managed to save his camera which was quite a feat because his cards are brimmed with amazing images <laughs> <laughs> and that was my 64 gig card too
one of the benefits of coming away from a trip that was really enjoyable is that you end up with a lot of images that you really like and want to show to people. I really hope that you've enjoyed these videos as much as I've enjoyed putting them together. If you have enjoyed them, please be sure to leave a comment and a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. I have one more video from this area and I'll be showing that next week. And then it's back to videos from a very special place, Vancouver Island. Until then, bye-bye for now. <music>